What's up, guys? Welcome back to the OGT Podcast. It has been a minute since we recorded, and Wesley can relate. I've had a lot to do. College basketball is very busy. Um, yeah. But I'm super excited uh, to have Wesley Booker on the podcast. Wesley, tell me who you are. Tell me why you're here. What's your favorite color? No, I'm just kidding. Uh, just go ahead, man. Tell us who you are. Uh, well, like you said, I'm Wesley. Um, I played basketball at uh, 1A school, Mount Vernon in Central Arkansas. Um, you know, I'm here at UAM, uh, University of Arkansas at Monticello in my sophomore year. Um, I'm redshirting this year because I had surgery on my knee, but um, I'm just here, uh, you know, living life, trying to uh, trying to wherever, go wherever God leads me in life. Um, it's been a it's been a long road getting here to UAM for sure, um, with COVID and everything. But uh, you know, I'm just I'm just here living life, man. Yeah, you've um, you know, I've gotten some opportunities to speak places, um, and we'll get into the questions soon. But tell me, um, you got to speak at your first like event, I guess you'd say recently. Mm-hmm. How was that? Tell us a little bit. Uh, it was so it was our uh, bcm encounter it was on tuesday night uh we were just walking through the book of james and i had um like the james 14 through 26 uh in chapter two it's just faith without works is dead basically like living out your faith is um is what i taught and i felt like i could relate to that a lot just because of how my life is how, just how i've lived my life um not saying like it's good but like I mean, I've had times where, like, I'm just not, you know, living, or not living bad, but, um, like, not necessarily doing the works, um, not required, but, you know, they go along with having a, a active living faith, and so uh, that was that was awesome. I mean, it was just a feeling I've never felt before. Um, I thought I'd be nervous at first, but I get up there, and it's just like talking to people, like just me and you talking about Jesus right here is what it felt like. And so it's just it just opened my eyes that like I mean you can talk to anyone about Jesus and it doesn't have to be awkward. I mean it can be just a normal conversation, just like us talking about basketball or anything else. So And that's I love that you said that, um, like that you can talk about Jesus with anything you're doing. I'm gonna well, I don't have to get it. Uh, I have a shirt that says like it's for track. So I run track too at yeah. Williams and I have a shirt and it says running is my ministry and there's like a blank that it's filled in at and the whole point of the shirt is that you could say like basketball is my ministry mm-hmm. teaching is my ministry the classroom is my ministry like whatever because the word ministry just means to serve mm-hmm. you know, a lot of people don't realize that they think ministry is like going on a mission trip and you know donating to the poor which is great and if you can mm-hmm. obviously do it but but I got to ask you the question of all questions, Wesley. When did you decide to stop living on your time and start living on God's time, and why? So, I mean, there's been a couple of times that I've went back and forth between my time and God's time. So, uh, I would say from you know when I was little to, uh, I mean, I've been. Uh, I've placed my faith in Jesus when I was eight years old, um, and then I just didn't really, I, I wasn't pressured to do it like by other people and stuff like that. I just, um, like I knew everything, I just, that was the only thing that I had left to do. And then like, I never, uh, just hadn't been like in a disciple group and like more, um, like just not wanting more, but like just um, like getting more poured into me, I guess until I got here to college. But, uh, so from when I was little to my, um, my senior year, played basketball. That was, I mean, I, you know, went to church, um, went to youth, went to church, all that stuff. But, excuse me, I played basketball my whole life. Um, and then my senior year, I, uh, I tore my ACL six games into the season and then didn't get to play the rest of it. Thought I was gonna go, you know, big D one school, all that good stuff, uh, living the dream. But um, and so that I know that was God's way of like kind of grabbing my attention and being like, you know, this isn't this isn't what 
you're doing for your life. Like you're you're putting this before me, so you know, like just before I got out of hand, um, and so that like from then until like I would say, I mean, I, so that happened. I um, I had a bunch. I had quite a few like schools talking to me, but um, after I got hurt, I had talked to them, and there's only two that I had actually got offers, and it was between Lyon and Arkansas Tech. And so, like, I just kind of pray about it and think about it and talk to you know my family and stuff about it. And I chose Lyon, which I mean, I've talked to people now. They're like, you chose, like, there was dudes on a team last year when we went to Tech, and they were like, you chose Lion over this? And I was like, yeah, yeah I just, mm -hmm. yeah, it's a crazy gym. But I was just like, I just didn't feel like I was supposed to be at Tech. Like, I just didn't, didn't get the vibe, didn't feel it. And so, um, anyways, I played last year, um, had a pretty good year, and then the summer, Tore my ACL again. Um, it was pretty complicated. It was just supposed to be a routine. Huh? Was it the same one? Yeah. So it was supposed to be a routine. Like, my knee was just sore one night, and there was, I had MRI, and they were just going to go and take out a 7 millimeter bone chip in my knee floating around, and so that, we need to get that out. So between the MRI and when I had surgery, that bone chip had got stuck in my ACL, and so they had to, like, rip it to get it out. And so I had to have ACL surgery again. So here I am, uh, sitting, uh, redshirting my sophomore year. Um, but I feel like after I tore my knee the first time, that was, I mean, God did get a hold of me and I changed like some things I was doing in my life. Um, and then I kind of like got away, but not like just super far away, but there's just simple things that I hadn't been doing and then uh you know being here at uam with uh jeremy woodall is my bcm director he's just like such an awesome dude and just in that ministry being surrounded by like just so many awesome and encouraging people is like it helps me and so like in high school i stopped living on my time but it wasn't like it wasn't completely on my like on god's time at the same time but now like, I feel like I've definitely, like, you know, flipped my life, and it's like, you know, I understand that I can't, like, none of this is on me. Like, this is all on God. And so, um, yeah, I just, I mean, honestly, here pretty recently. Yeah, well, that's awesome, dude. Um, I can definitely relate, like you said, um, we talked a little bit about it before, about, like, kind of being shaken um, your senior year, like, you, you know, you had injuries, and dude, that is something that is very hard to come back from. Like, it is so hard to come back from, you know, that to having the year you had last year. Um, didn't you – weren't you, like, one of the top rebounders in the conference? Yeah, I don't know what number. I know I led our team, mm -hmm. but I don't know about, like, in conference standing-wise. Slight play. Slight play. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, but, um, but no, dude – um, you know, I talked about my senior year. I went through a period of time where I had to really reevaluate, like, who, you know, who I was playing for and who I was looking for because, you know, I didn't – from, you know, I had some visits lined up uh, around, like, March, and then COVID happened, and I, you know, I didn't have any offers from, mm -hmm. like, March to July. And then I was luckily blessed to get like three. Um, yeah. But it was like from that, like from March to July, I guess you, you kind of nailed it. God got a hold of me and, you know, he really grabbed my attention. And it was like, hey, like, who are you playing for? Who are you living for? Because it was like, um, have you, are you a Marvel guy? I, I'm, I'm not like, you know, super into it, but I like them. Have you ever like seen Spider-Man, uh, the first Spider-Man with Tom Holland? Yes. You know, um, that one's called Homecoming, Spider-Man Homecoming. Uh -huh. You know that part where Tony, I, I didn't think about this until now. You know that part where Tony Stark, like, looks at uh, Spider-Man, and Spider-Man's like, I'm nothing without this suit. And he's like, yeah. if you're nothing without the suit, then you don't deserve it. <laughs> Bro, it was like, it was almost like God was looking at me and telling me that. 
it was like, if you're nothing without basketball, you don't deserve to play. Yeah. And it was just like, uh, like, like that's, what, that's what it felt like because it was like I had to realize that, um, and I said this last week when I was speaking at Fields of Faith, like, if I never dribble a ball again or if I never, if I never run on a track again, I know that God still has a purpose and plan for my life and that I'm a child mm-hmm. of God. Do I want to stop doing that? No, obviously not. Like, I'm passionate about those things and I love it. Yeah. But, I mean, I know that that doesn't define me. And that's a lesson that I had to learn. Mm -hmm. I feel like at some point everyone has to learn it. Um, Hopefully it's not through, you know, injury or some crazy pandemic and stuff. But, like, I mean, everyone, because it's just so hard to, like, live in this world of all these different things that we can get into. And, I mean, it's easy to put other things, other idols above God. I mean, it's as sure. bad as it is like it's just so easy because there's so many things that are not of god in this world and so it's like it's just hard and like for me like we was talking like the recruiting process i loved it i mean i love getting attention from college basketball coaches and so like me like i was holding out um you know holding my out for that big offer and whatnot and so it just kind of like was god humbled me because it's like I was I was holding out for like glory I guess like for the glory I was getting you know all the attention I was getting um, instead of just picking where it was right for me and so like I feel like in our lives sometimes you know you'll uh, you'll do these things you'll you know speak or you know pray real loud and all this stuff it, but like for your own glory instead of just doing what like God tells you to pray pray you don't have to do it you know where everyone can hear you and stuff, but you don't have to do it quiet either because you don't have to be ashamed of it. But it's just like, you just got to be able to do it, um, you know, do whatever God wants you to do, um, you know, however that may be. So that's, I love that you said that because, like, you know, talking about, um, there's a verse, and I think it's like First Samuel, where um, the author says, God knows... I don't know exactly what it says. I need to mm-hmm. get better at memorizing that. But it was like, um, man looks at the outward appearance, but God looks at the heart. Mm-hmm. And so it's like, if I'm speaking or doing something, it's like, only God knows if I'm really doing it for him or not. And I have i don't know if you're into, like, like if you ever like listen to other podcasts or if you like mm-hmm. reading like, Christian books or anything, but I think it was, I don't know who it was, um, Maybe it was like Rick Warren that said, "You're if you don't have a good private life, you'll never have a good pub, public life." And it's like if I don't get into my word every day, mm-hmm. if I'm not praying every day, like it's going to be very hard to show fruit. And it's going to be very hard to, I mean, like it's like if I'm getting poured into daily from Jesus, from reading and listening and all that then like it's going to be easy for me to love other people so Mm -hmm. i don't know like if you have like a certain routine you follow or anything but kind of talk to me about like you know as an athlete you're busy 24 7 so like Mm -hmm. how do you fit in maybe your bible reading time or listening or sermons or like whatever you yeah so um like for reading it's just like i mean some days I'll do it, like, I'll wake up 30 minutes earlier than I normally would. Like, today I had a 940 class, and I woke up at 9, um, and, like, just read, um, and, like, if I'm not going to wake up early, because, like, if I had an 8 a.m., I probably wouldn't wake up at 7.30, I would set to do it. Um, either, like, after practice or, like, when I had free time, because, like, uh, I take in, like, a part of, like, the, you know, things I do, um, like, with the youth or anything with BCM, like, that's well, from the past year and a half, it's been, like, not, it's been just as important to me as basketball, honestly. Like, in my schedule-wise, like, I don't, like, if I, you don't want to skip practice. I mean, you know this, you don't want to skip practice, and I don't, like, it's the same thing with BCM. Like, I don't want to skip a BCM. Uh, and so, um, I mean, I'm glad that, that like, I've kind of allowed that to become a part of my schedule, um, like, permanently, I guess you could say. But, and then, like, reading, you know, just in the morning, or I'll either do it before I go to bed. Because, like you said, you know, being super busy, it's hard to fit that in just in the middle of the day sometime. 
Um, and then, like, I do listen to podcasts. I don't listen, like, just a ton because I, I love music. But when I do, it'll be, like, when I'm driving home or something. Like, I'll just turn on a podcast. Uh, I like listening to Torn Wells. Um, and so, know. do what? I didn't even know he had one. Yeah. Uh, so, anyways, yeah, I just do that normally when I'm in the car because um, it's a lot easier for me to, like, be, you know, alone um, and sit there and actually – Pay attention and listen. Dude, I gotta check myself because I love music too. And sometimes I'll be jamming in my car like I got an hour drive, and I'll be thinking to myself, I'll be like, I should really just pray right now. Mm-hmm. And sometimes I'll turn it off. Like sometimes I'll press pause and I will, and other times I'll be like, in a minute. <laughs> yeah. yeah. And so, yeah, I've had to. Um, yeah, I I have to set time aside, like you said. Um, like one routine I've tried to get in lately, uh, I've tried to get into lately is like, you know, having a morning routine of just, even if it's just two chapters a day, like I'm trying to read the whole Bible right now. And mm-hmm. I actually made a new rule for myself recently. And it has, dude, it's been like a miracle for me. So I cannot play video games or watch TV shows that day until I've read my Bible. Mm-hmm. And I did not realize how much I play video games and watch TV shows until I had that rule, bro. Because like I was about to, like me and Ben Keaton were about yeah. to play Fortnite uh, last night. I was like, I got to read. And he was like, Yeah, go ahead, take your time. And I started reading. Um, and it's like obviously, you know, your day's good if you start off reading your Bible. But if you can, it's not a big deal. Like it's good yeah. things like. You know, if you don't read it at 7.45 every morning, you know, right before whatever, like, God's not going to be mad at you. Like, it's mm-hmm. just one of those things. He just wants to, he just wants you to get to know him better. Yeah. Like, it's one of those things. I mean, he doesn't love you less, but it's easier for you to understand how much he loves you if you know him better. Mm-hmm. That's right. Uh, I have a bar. I just, I don't know, just kind of put that out there. But, uh, so... As far as your injuries and stuff, dude, like I, I know that as an athlete, like that's so hard um, just to kind of like hold on to your faith, like during that time. Were there any like verses or things that people said to you that you held on to, like whenever you were going through that? Even like right now, like you're going through an injury right now. Yeah. Um, is there anything that's kind of helped you, you know, stay strong in your faith? Um. Just like, so the situation, like I got moved around. Um, it's like, I was, we're staying in apartments this year. And so I was supposed to be with like another dude that was like my age. Um, I was a lot closer with them, like him. It was me, it was three of us, it was three freshmen last year. And so he was one of the three. And so obviously I'm a lot closer to him than I am like some of the other team. But, um, so we were supposed to be staying in an apartment. And it was on the second floor, but when I had surgery, they moved me to the first floor. And there was another dude on our team that was hurt, um, and he's, like, older. And, and me and him, like, we're teammates, but, like, past, like, off the court, we just never hung out a whole lot. And so, like, as soon as, um, like, I got out of surgery and the first time, like, from the small surgery and thought everything was going to be fine. So I'm sitting in the car and I asked, it was uh, my mom and my girlfriend were in the front two seats. And I was like, I kind of woke up for a minute. And have you ever had surgery on anything? I had a, mm, I think I broke my collarbone when I was like five. I okay. Before, so yeah. Was- so, so like when you're like, you wake up, but you're like, you're like, you're physically awake, but mentally you're just kind of like, eh. So I... I remember like waking up and I and I thought this was a dream. Like when I woke up in my bed, I was like, "That did, did that really happen? Did we have that conversation?" Um, so I was like, you know, what did the doctor say? Just you know, kind of trying to talk, and um, that kind of like looked at each other, and I was my mom was like, "Oh, someone's calling me," so she answered the phone call, and so I just sit back there, eyes probably crossed. I don't even remember, but uh, and so she got the phone. I was like, "Well, what he say?" And she told me that, like, I was going to have to have surgery on my ACL again and go through all that. And I wouldn't be able to play this year. 
And so, like, I think I shed, like, the first time I got hurt, I cried, like, it was in practice, and I cried, like, the whole afternoon up until, like, that night. Like, it was just a bad deal. But this, this, like, this time I shed, you know, one tear, and then I was, like, and she told me, like, that she talked to my coach and that I was, like, going to be moving around with this other roommate um, on the first floor who coincidentally was also hurt, and so I was, like, this is God's way of telling me, like, I'm putting you with him to, like, you know, kind of reach him, get a hold of him, stuff like that. And so, like, that that's just one thing. Like, luckily, I was able to realize it as soon as I did rather than just be upset. And, um, I mean, people have told me all the time, like, you know, you'll bounce back stronger than the first time, stronger than ever, blah, blah, blah. And I'm like, I mean, yeah, y'all are right. But the process still sucks <laughs> either way. Um, and then, like, my girlfriend has a thing on her phone. It's, like, uh, major setbacks or set up major comebacks or something like that. I don't remember exactly what the saying is, but um, I I read that all the time, and I'm like, yeah, I mean, that's, that's right. And so uh, I, I feel bad because I know there's stuff that people have said to me that, like, especially the first time. I mean, it was – two years ago uh almost to the day so in six days no three days um but uh like i just can't think of anything that people said other than just like you know i had some people i guess that would be like you know you know everything happens for a reason that's one thing i heard a lot and i was like yes i know like i was like i know <laughs> that's what i want to ask you like did anyone ever say some things that kind of annoyed you it was like okay yes okay. yeah about the thousandth time i heard god's in control everything happens for a reason i'm like i have understood it like i am i yeah i'm past the being upset like i i understand and all that stuff and um just people being like you know don't like people that the people that didn't say that and were like this gives you an opportunity to you know be a better like not be a better teammate but be a teammate in a different way rather than on the court with your team and so like I kind of I guess I was the assistant coach whatever um, I helped coach Z out a little bit like just trying to see things off the court and just like knowing that you can still be uh, like effective in whatever you're doing like if you can't perform it anymore like it's kind of hard to specifically relate it but everyone's got something that it's like if you couldn't do that anymore you would be like super upset but this was god's way of giving me like another perspective and showing me that i can help in more ways than just being on the court um and doing all that stuff and like now in college as a sophomore i mean i i was a starter last year and now i'm filling up water bottles in practice like obviously i didn't think that was gonna happen i don't mind it because it like you know, it kind of humbles me, but like it's just one of it's just one of those things that it's like you know, um, like yeah, he is in control and all that, but you just kind of understand, um, just that like you know I, uh, you know I get to see a different different point of view that not everyone gets to see. Yes, yeah. So. yeah, I love that you you get to see it from a different point of view, and like I've tried to think to myself. Um, you know, I'm going to be honest, on my college basketball team, I'm not playing 40 minutes. Mm-hmm. And, you know, when I was 15, 16, even 17, like, I think I would have really let that frustrate me and almost get yeah. on me. But knowing now, like you said, like, I try to view it as, like, okay, you know, like, you're not getting to play this year and like that dude that's awful like obviously Mm -hmm. we don't want that to happen like we would rather you be playing but it's like instead of you know all the time you would have to work out since you can't it's like you know you have more time to read your bible or Mm -hmm. i don't know if you're much of a reader like you could read books or or whatever like you might be able to like you know discover a part of yourself you didn't know you really liked yeah there's benefits to that I mean, I think oh, yeah, it's absolutely. to everything that happens. Um, mm-hmm. But, and I don't, I don't, okay, when you know how, like, 
you said that somebody told you um, everything happens for a reason. Mm-hmm. Like, I don't know if you've ever, like, heard people say stuff about, like, this concept of, like, self-help or anything like that. Do you know what I'm talking about with that? A little bit, but not a whole lot. Like, you know, work hard and the universe will give you what you want. Yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. It's, 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 like, all these, co- like, concepts without God involved. Like, I deserve yeah. it. Like, I deserve yeah, this because yeah, I've been pretty, yeah. And stuff like that. Mm-hmm. And it's like, you know, whenever people say stuff like, everything happens for a reason, well, God works all things together mm-hmm. for those who love him and are called according to his purpose. And it's like, I try my best when I'm giving advice to be biblical with it. If that mm-hmm. makes sense. Yeah. Yeah. If I'm not being biblical with it, it's not the truth. And I'm not saying like whoever said that to you is like, yeah, this is a big common thing that I hear. And it's like, oh, everything happens for a reason or like, oh, it's going to work out for me. Well, what if it doesn't? Mm-hmm. Like, and like, I've, I feel like the, like, I know the people that told me that, like the type of people, like sometimes people that go to church, they don't feel like they have to like, I guess get biblical with it. Like with giving advice, like, cause I know like the people that said that, like people I went to church with, and so it's like they just didn't feel like I needed to hear them say like you know God's gonna work this out for you. Rather, they just say the general you know everything's gonna happen for a reason. And like I kind of like what you said about um, like getting biblical with uh, like giving advice because like you you almost have to. And like if you do, uh, like if you give advice biblical like give them full with advice with a believer then like I mean they're gonna understand but like if you give it to a non-believer like that's gonna make them think about it like they're gonna be like why did he say like why do you use this example from some old book or like right, you know yeah. just it would just make someone think a lot more than normal well it's crazy you say that like with the giving biblical advice um, mm-hmm. my friend Devin you know Devin right Devin Halfway. yeah Goofball, man. Yeah. Uh, in our little group message with me, him, and Stetson, I had, okay, so I had somebody one time try to put me on like, the laws of power and stuff like that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And it was actually an adult who did. And they're like, you read this book, it's, you know, knows you all this stuff, blah, blah, blah. Yeah. And so Devin actually asked me last night, and it's something I've thought of a lot. He asked me last night, he said, hey, do you believe in the laws of power? And I said, what do you mean? He said, well, like, have you ever heard, like, you know, if you want to get better at basketball, be around better basketball players. Or, like, or, like the law of attraction. Yeah. And I was like, I mean, to a degree, some of that stuff is true, but if it's not based on the Bible, it's not true. And I was like, a lot of those things are actually, and I'm going to, I'm going to read it to you. Mm -hmm. Um, We're going so off script right now, but I love it. (laughs) I'm going to read this to you. He was like, um, oh, it's talking about like manifestation and stuff like that. Yeah. Yeah. I I said this, I said, there are a lot of people that say like, I wrote this dream down, um, then wrote out the steps of how to do it. And then it happened. Oh my gosh, manifestation is real. And I'm like, no, bro, that's just working hard towards something. <laughs> that's having a vision and working hard towards it. That's why Galatians 6 9 says, Let us not become weary in doing good, for at the proper time we will reap a harvest if we do not give up. And then mm-hmm. there was another one where um, there was a verse in Proverbs that said, like, um, Walk with the wise and you will become wise, but the companion of fool, the companion of fools will suffer harm. And yeah. he was like, yeah, there's this other one that's like, surround yourself with people or whatever. And I'm like, dude, a lot of that's just common sense stuff that people have twisted. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and that's like a, that's like people taking stuff out of context. Because that's like, that's saying, you know, I mean, I'm sure you know, like people, like you hang around people that cuss and drink and smoke, you're probably going to cuss and drink and smoke. You hang around people that don't do that and get in the gym, you're probably going to be around, you're probably going to not do, be around that and get in the gym. And it's like, exactly. no, it's like if I surround myself with people that have 300 IQs, I'm going to get smarter. Like, no, that's not how it works. 
It's about habits. It's like you're around people with good habits. You're going to develop. Them. Yeah. Because you're going to look at them and you're probably going to be inspired and be like, hey, how do you know all those verses? Mm-hmm. It's like, oh, because I read. Well, hey, I want to know them. Well, hey, maybe you should read. Yeah. Okay, yeah. Hey. Being around me is not good. <laughs> exactly. Like, I don't know, bro, but yeah, it's just one of those things that um, I heard that because, like, I've, I've seen a lot of people do that, especially, like, with sports. You know, they've been, like, it's kind of crazy to me how the greatest shooter to ever touch a basketball is a Christian. I'm not saying that simply the fact that he's a Christian is, what, like, is why Steph Curry yeah. is the ball so well, but it's, like, he's not relying on, like, you know, his affirmations or, or mm-hmm. whatever to help him shoot the ball better. He knows that God has given him an ability, and if he trusts in God and works hard, he's going to be his best. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. So, one of my last questions. Um, mm-hmm. Do you have any favorite Christian books? No, I am not. The Bible. I mean, Bible. I'm not... <laughs> I had, like, I got some for graduation, uh, like, in high school, and I just, like, I'm just not a huge reader. Like, I just, I don't know what it is, and I wish I was, and I've tried. Like, this year, like, me being hurt, I'm like, okay, I'm actually going to read these books that I got. But, like, I just haven't, yeah, I'm saying yet, because I will one day be, because I used to read all the time as a little kid. Like, those AR points, it might have been because it was a competition. <laughs> but like uh but like no i'll i'm gonna like i try it's just something that i gotta work at because i went so long without you know having to read a book so i didn't but well, i didn't read from like seventh grade to my senior year like mm-hmm. rarely read yeah and i started reading a lot in the last two years um i will say um Jonathan Isaac, you know, he, uh, The Magic, yeah, yeah. so I got his book that I have not started yet, but that is a guy, like, I followed on social media and kind of kept up with him a little bit, and that's someone that, like, I mean, him and Tim Tebow, I guess, are two, the, like, athletes that I just kind of look up to and, you know, can read and, and relate to, I guess. Yeah. <laughs> I love, I love his books, man. Yes. That book right there was a game changer for me. It's called mm-hmm. Shaken. Yes. Uh, discovering your true identity in the midst of life's storms. And he just he talks about getting cut from the NFL and how his identity was shaken. Mm-hmm. And how the amount of like media scrutiny he got for yeah. just being a Christian was insane. And mm-hmm. It's pretty cool him talking about like being able to handle it, and it is a book mm-hmm. that is I would say really speaks to athletes. Yeah, yeah. But I haven't read Jonathan Isaac's book. What's it called? Stand by me, stand up, or stand by me. One of the two. Um, but I mean, it's just about him, you know, not kneeling for the flag in the bubble and all that stuff. Yeah. So and like I feel like I don't know this for sure, but it's like. He did that, and then he tore his ACL and was out the next season. And I don't know if people are like, oh, he, you know, stood. He's a Christian, and he still got hurt, you know. But, like, I don't know. I just am afraid sometimes that people look at things like that, and it's like that's not at all the case. Like, bad things happen to people who are faithful to Jesus all the time. But it just it's your, it's your point of view on it. Like, some people may look at me, and it's like, Oh, he's having to go through another another knee surgery um, and have to sit out of bed doing what he loves another year. But in reality, I'm like, I have the opportunity to share with someone who I wouldn't have if uh, not had this had this injury. So, it's, yeah, it's so true. I love that so much because, like, we can really get in the the dwelling state of like, why is this happening to me? Mm. I'm not getting to play as much as I'd like, or I'm not. You know, I'm not getting to play at all this year or whatever. And, like, 
Yeah, you, you hit it perfect, man. There, I would not get to witness to certain people if I wasn't, like, in the position I am or mm-hmm. whatever the case may be. Yeah. And it's like, what are you going to do about it? Like, for you, like, not playing this year, it's like, are you, like, you can, I mean, people say this all the time, you can sit around and whine and complain about it, or you can work to get better at it. For me, people are like, oh, you know, you got to sit out another year. Well, I'm not going to sit around and moan and groan about it. I'm going to work to get back to where I was, if not better. It's the same with our faith, like, oh, I can't memorize scripture. Or I don't know how to talk to people about Jesus. What are you going to do about it? Are you going to sit and complain? Are you going to get in your Bible and abide in Jesus and let him abide in you and lead your life? It's like, it's, oh, it's just like, I mean, people, it's just, I don't know how to pray. No, you do. It's just a conversation with God. You can do it any time, but what are you going to do about it? So. Oh, my gosh. I'm, uh, I, dude, I love that you said that because I'm reading a book called The Life Must Fall by Louis Giglio and he literally said that he said that so many people have the attitude well this is just who I am and that's just such a lie it's a yes. lie from the enemy bro it's a lie like yes. you, when you tell yourself like well like like you said like well I don't know much scripture I'm just I'm not a I just can't person. memorize stuff I just can't memorize stuff like, like, like you can like if you feel that need on your heart, then you're very capable of doing it. The only time that that is the case is when you have like some kind of disease or I don't know. Yeah. Like, where you legitimately can't. Yeah. But, like if you can't, that's not just who you are. That's who you're choosing to be. Ooh. Ooh. Mm-hmm. Ooh. But yeah, so like that, that really bothers me. I see that being, so I'm glad you no. Yeah. Well, brother, it's been fun. I'm glad yeah. that uh, you got to come on. I know that yeah. you know, here's this. Maybe someone's going through an injury. Um, you know, God's going to allow somebody to listen to this who needs to listen to it. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I appreciate you letting me come on and talk. This is fun. It's the first podcast, so it's yeah. sick. Hopefully, you'll get on more. Yeah. yeah. Do what? I said, hopefully, you'll get on more. Yeah, bro. Well, hopefully. I yeah. loved it. Yeah, it was nice. fun. All right. Well, thanks for coming on, bro. And no we'll see you guys later. Peace.